Dale and we're going to look at the repair of the HV2PE. Here we're looking at the eccentric of the vibrator. On back we go into the motor housing of the vibrator. You have the isolator with the clamp. You have the 12 inch uh, protector hose, cover hose leading down in the, with the motor hoses and the sensor coming out of the other end of the cover hose. At this point we're going to take chisel the concrete off here and here and then remove the three bolts to take the isolator off the vibrator. Due to the concrete buildup underneath your protector hose, you have to cut it off with a razor knife to get to your clamps that's on your protector hose. At this time, we're going to cut the two clamps that are right here and then clean the concrete off the rest of the motor housing. After the first two clamps are cut, you need to cut the, the worm style clamp down here where the plug is so you can eventually remove the cover hose completely. At this time, we'll cut the tapes that hold the sensor onto the vibrator and the zip tie and remove the sensor from the vibrator. Then we'll undo the hose, hydraulic hoses and remove them also. This time we'll pull the stopper out of the motor housing. At this time we'll remove the eccentric housing.
this time we'll remove the lock nut on the inside of the motor housing, the O-ring that is behind it, and remove the motor and motor hoses. Okay, for the removal of the motor hose, the tapping of the motor on the vise puts a, puts a shock through these fittings and allows the fittings to come loose. Once you take these hoses out and drains the oil out of it, then we'll go to our motor department to be re reconditioned. Time we'll inspect our parts that we've disassembled from the vibrator. We'll start with the vibrator motor housing. We've cleaned the wells as you've seen prior to around here and our weld points and also here on the sides where the balls are located. Uh, that was pretty kind of hot, tough to see. There's two more that are a little easier to see as long as those are nice and flush and, and aren't showing any kind of uh, holes or anything like that in there, then, then those are fine. Um, these wells can be can be flat down in through here. If it's excessively flat, you know, then it's then it's time to replace the housing. Um, this weld is very in very good shape. Also it can be flattened down in here. If it's flat or dished in and then it's time to replace it also. Cleaned around here, check the thickness of here, make sure this surface is flat so it so the eccentric does seal up against it when we put it, reassemble it. Our eccentric, we're gonna, we're gonna inspect it. We're gonna look for an hourglass shape in this part of the housing. We're gonna look for excessive wear on the tip of the housing. We're gonna look, make sure that the weld is, is still in very good shape. Some of the things that you may see with these housings is wear here. Another thing you may see is wear on the tip. This happens to be a long tip. The one that we have is a short tip. The wear is going to be very similar to both. Excessive wear comes to this. Both of these, this is full of concrete on the inside. We can't even get the weight out of it as you see. This one was had a hole in it on the end and the weight did come out of that one. Those are very excessively worn centric housings. The motor hoses, what we're looking at for the motor hoses, we're looking to make sure there's no wire braid showing on them. On some of these hoses, you're gonna see a shiny spot. The shiny spots are fine as long as there's no wire braid visible. Other things you can look for on the hoses is dry cracking. If you bend it and it cracks, then it also needs to be replaced. That would be the same on both, both motor hoses and also your hydraulic hoses. Another thing with the hydraulic fittings is you want to check this internal fitting to make sure that it does not turn. Just put it in a simple vise. Take both hands and see if you can turn it. If you cannot turn it, that's a good fitting. If, it's, if it turns, you have a possibility of a leak there that can cause oil buildup inside the motor housing.
The rest of the parts we're going to look at is our isolator. We're going to, if it is a block isolator as this is, we're going to look at it and make sure there's no excessive wear around the edges of it. This isolator has some wear here, but it is a very usable isolator yet. It is not nowhere near the end of its life. So this is a good isolator. There's actually no reason to take this plate off here unless this plate that you can physically see is if it would be bent or the mounting rod goes in here. Next thing you want to look at is your stopper and your plug that came out of your motor housing and out of your cover hose. If these got seriously oil soaked, they will swell and make them hard to reinstall. It also makes them soft. You may want to consider replacing them at this time if they're... But these two here are very good shape. Uh, we'll probably reuse these. The O-ring that was behind the lock nut for the motor, one of the things you want to look at is you want to make sure there's not a flat spot on this O-ring. By taking this O-ring in your fingers and, and twisting it, if you feel a flat spot on it, that O-ring needs replaced. The clamp that goes on top of the isolator block, you want to look and make sure that it's not sprung from tightening it out on the bar, mounting bar. Also, you want to take both of the locking set screws out of it, retap the holes, and replace the set screws in that for ease of installation. This time, we'll inspect our cover hose. What we're looking at on the cover hose is wear parts on it where it's wore down into the inner layers of the cords of the hose, any kind of a hole. Um, you're going to have more chance of a hole up in here per se than, but anytime that's rubbing on any part of the machine, it's going to wear. Uh, if, you, if you bend it and you see a lot of excessive dry cracking, deep dry cracking, that hose should be replaced because it's going to start drawing water and concrete into it and fill the hose. Here are some examples of some bad hoses. You can see the excessive dry cracking up in here, here, all the way down into there. This hose needs to be replaced. Also, if you get them filled with concrete, as this hose is, it needs to be replaced. need to make sure that this slot is clean. The tab from the lock portion may break off and stay in there. So you need to make sure that this slot is completely empty of, of any materials from the previous lock portion. We're wanting to remove the shield on the cage side of the bearing. Install the first one with the seal down. Next, install two shims. Remove the bearing shield on the cage side again. Put the cage side down now so the two removed shields are together. Install your lock washer and your lock and your nut. Install your lock washer retaining tool and then use your the tool for the spanner for the nut to tighten it up. Lining up one of the tabs with the slot in the nut, taking the screwdriver and tapping it up into the to the notch. We're starting now to reassemble our vibrator. We're going to put the motor into the vise at a safe way to where it doesn't damage the motors. You see the lining marks on the motor. 
you want to put your, your vice jaws against both of those lining marks like as such. Putting them here will damage the motor and cause it to either lock up or internal damage to the motor. So you never want to clamp on the smooth side. You always want to clamp on the lining mark side of it. Also, when I put the motor in here, the pressure side of the motor has a P stamped above it. Always put it to your right hand side. On the end cap of the motor, you'll see a, a P stamped in there for the pressure side of the motor. If for, for chance that P is not in there, there's a way of telling the difference between the pressure and return side. The ports and where the hoses go, the pressure side is shallow, the return side is deeper. So if that P is not there, you can always tell that the, pressure, the shallow side is the pressure side, the deeper side is your return side. The two hoses that go on there are two different sizes. One is quarter inch, one is three eighths. The quarter always goes on the pressure side. The return always goes on the left side. Okay, when tightening the hoses on the motor, you need these hoses tight. But always remember the material that you're working with, the aluminum, you do not want to over tighten and strip the threads. We have an example of two eccentric housings here, uh, an older style and a newer style. The older style housing is two and three eighths inch in diameter. The newer style is two and five eighths in diameter. These two eccentric housings take a different eccentric bearing housing. The new style with the two and five eighths inch diameter takes a 655, which is a thinner diameter eccentric bearing housing. The older style, which is a two and three eighths, takes a thicker style, which is a 655-1. Here you can see the difference between the two housings. Okay. Here is a progression of our weights that we've established over the years. The short weight you see here is, what, is our old P style weight. We went into this style weight with long weight, which is our old style PE and, and now is our new P weight. Our newest style weight is our rib weight. You notice on one end of it, it has the hex in it for the drive shaft of the motor. The other end does not have a hex in it due to the broaching procedures to broach this hex. We're getting ready to install the weight into the eccentric housing. We want to check the, the hexes in there. Take an old drive shaft and you insert it into the hex about three quarters of an inch and wiggle it back and forth. On these style weights, you want to check both ends to see which hex has the less play in it the less play is the one you want to put on the drive shaft of the motor at that time. These, heck, these weights are broached all the way down in, so if you insert the drive shaft all the way down in, you're going to get into good hex and you're not going to get a true feel for the worn hex part of the, of the weight. We're ready to install our eccentric weight into our eccentric housing. Once you've found the, the hex with the best, least amount of play in it, you want to insert the 655 over top of the bearings with a plastic face hammer and then make it almost flush with the top of the bearings and then insert it into the eccentric housing and using the same hammer finish inserting it into the bearing into the eccentric housing. By tapping the eccentric housing once or twice on a, on a solid surface, lines your bearings up in your eccentric housing so everything aligns straight. And then by spinning it, you can see how free it spins. Right? 